Hello, welcome to video two. In, in this video, we're going to be talking about primitive variables. Now, what are primitive variables? Primitive variables are the variables or the data types that are built into Java. There are a few that we're going to be learning today um, that are on the AP exam, and there's going to be one that isn't, and I will let you know which one it is. Now, this right here is a copy and paste from the very first video, um, and I'm just going to expand on this. So, um, there are a few different types of variables. The first variable that we're going to be talking about is called an integer. Now, programmers uh, generally shorten a lot of words, so integer is going to be shortened into int. And when we type int, and it's going to create an integer. Now, what is an integer? Um, using the math definition, it's going to be a positive or negative whole number. So it's a very large whole number that we're going to be using. So just think no decimals for integers. Um, so I'm going to do this one called example, and I'm going to call that one. So we have an int named example one. So whenever I want to reference this particular variable, all I have to do is type in example one. Um, so let's take a look at some of this real quick. When we come into this, we can use this variable in place of a number. But for today, I'm going to show you how to debug because the variables are not given in a spot where you can access them very easily. So to tell what a variable's value is, we're going to type in the word system.out.println. Now what this does, it will take an entire line and it will print out what this value is down here. So if I run this, it's actually going to cause an error because example doesn't have a value. So we're going to do example1 equals um, 100. Notice I have a semicolon. This 100 gets stored into example. We cannot write this, example 1. This is basically saying example 1, set that equal to, uh, to the value 100. That's not really quite what we're looking for. So if I run this, if I'm lucky, it will pop up with the console here once this loads up. If I'm unlucky, I'll have to do it myself. Oh, there's the console. Now my picture is in the way, so let me throw that on the other side of the screen. There I go. Whee! Okay, so right here it says 100 because the console will print that out. Okay, I can close that. I can update this value at any particular point in time. I could do, for example, example um, equals 200. And by the time it touches this line here, it just overwrites. So we have we go from 100 to 200 to okay, 200, and the computer completely loses anything that's before it. So right there, it's 200. Now, if I wanted to create a second variable, I could also do int example two. I could also put a comma here and do example three, and now I declared three and or two in one line. So and I would just need to come in here, example two equals 300, example three equals 400. I can add those together to make them example one. So example one equals example two plus example three. And th what this does is it evaluates what's on this side of the equation and then saves it in here. So when I do this, if I hit run here, and I'm going to I'm going to see that. One of the other things that you might want to look at at 700 because that's 300 plus 400. Something else that you uh, that you would want to be aware of is what happens if we want to use something with a decimal in it. Well, those variables are called doubles, and we actually write that one out. So we're going to do double example one. And double takes up twice the amount of space that an integer does. It's double the value. So it can't hold more in terms of like what's the largest value, but it can hold decimals and integers together, um, which allows us to make pretty much any real number. Um, you can do a few really cool things with this. And I'm going to put this in as double example one. And inside double example one, I can do 
double example equals example one. And that would just make it equal to uh, um, 700 because we just said that example one is 700 from that. If I run this, I'm going to notice something that's a little different when it prints out. I'm just waiting. We're going to notice that it has a decimal. Perfect. It adds it in there for us and it will be, um, it will float depending on how many different uh, significant figures it needs. You cannot, though, save an double or, an, or a double into an integer. So if I do example one equals double example one, you should get an error because you cannot convert a double into it. So think about this as a cubby. So if you have a um, a beach ball and it's the and it's smaller than the cubby and you inflate it to fit the cubby, it works. It's inside the cubby. But if it's already a big beach ball trying to go into a small uh, into a cubby that it won't fit in, you can't let any air out. Um, so that's the idea behind this. Now there is something called casting. When you have a mismatch like this, you can cast a variable. The way you cast a variable into another variable is, is using the word int or whatever the variable is here. So I turn this into an integer temporarily and then I can save it as example one. So this is just a saving it back. There are a couple other variables that you need to know. Um, the next one is Boolean. Um, and I'm going to call this one example bool. And this right here can be true or false. Those are the three primitive variables you need to know for the AP exam. The other, a, the other uh, variable that I feel is that's very important that will really help you on the AP exam is character. And character is a, um, is a single letter or symbol. And it, we abbreviate it char. And what we will call this is example char. And the way you set the value to this is you're going to do example char. You're going to do single quotes, one letter. So example char is equal to C. Um, and just so you know, the example bool can equal be true, all lowercase, or false, all at lowercase. We're going to be doing some really cool things with these. You can add them, subtract them, multiply them, divide them as you as you go. We're going to talk a little bit more about those as we go forward. But for now, um, this is what we want to. Um, this is how we set the value and change the value. And now you can use these particular values in what we're drawing. So let me get rid of everything except for one rectangle. If I run this. And I come in here and run this. I'm going to see. I'll have one rectangle. Perfect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the. I'm going to create an int called x and an int called y. I'm going to set the value immediately. So I'm going to say, well, at x you're equal to 100 and y you're equal to zero. And I hit save here. And then I'm also going to change the X and Y here. So that's just X and that's Y. And these values are going to take these values up here. So I'm going to click run. And as I run, I should see the change in where this is located. I'm going to add um, 300 not 3,300 to y, and it should move it down. And we, when it move, uh, so I can just change these variables and I can change the position without changing any code, which is really, really cool. Now I may have moved it down a little too much, so let's make that uh, 200. Yes, my size is 300, so it's off the screen. Ready, set, and... Going a little slow, perfect. So there's 250. So I can move it around as much as I want. So if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. I'll be more than happy to help and good luck.